A lot of our, of course, fluid storage systems, the vehicle has to have a cooling system, so we actually put all of that up front. So when you look for an engine, we really don't have, we have a motor, an electric motor, mm -hmm. but this vehicle gets around 60 mile per gallon equivalent. equivalent. So it's an electric drivetrain though, it's not a gasoline combustion. With just one electric motor? One electric motor, about uh, 80 kilowatts, but uh, essentially the 80 kilowatts, 80,000 watts, by itself has enough to power 17 houses. And the only byproduct is water. No combustion. What, what is the biggest engineering hurdle right now in these cars? In the cars? That you have to overcome? Well, there are a couple, um, being prototypes are always little issues we deal with. The biggest single thing is we're really trying to get the durability of the stacks themselves up, the fuel cell stacks. Mm -hmm. But uh, on the test bench, in the research lab, we've already solved that. We just haven't put it in the cars yet. The biggest single challenge for us right now still is infrastructure, not in the vehicles. We're able to drive these cars. We started in Maine. We're going all the way down the East Coast. We've already done that. We're now crossing, of course, through Tennessee. And we're actually going to be heading all the way to Los Angeles. The cars are capable of doing the, the mileage. We just need the stations to be able to fuel along the way. I've heard it takes about $20 million to put in a hydrogen station. Is, uh, that's is, a little is, high number, but... It, is there a, is there a, like a big organization they're trying to put chain ones in, or is it going to be mom and pop kind of situations, or... Several how? energy companies are actually involved in uh, hydrogen infrastructure. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, the cost, I really couldn't give you, I'm not on that side of it. Mm -hmm. I do believe the number you gave is a little high. A little high? Uh, but... Well, that was on the national news, that's the only reason I quoted it. Uh, there have been some numbers mentioned, but right now it's premature for me to say those numbers not being in that yeah. side of the industry. But we, will, we would need, if you think of the number of stations we'd need, we don't need uh, one hydrogen station at every single uh, fuel and gas station exactly. like you have now. It's going to be very similar to what you see with some diesel. It's not available at every station, but available at a majority of them. And that's, uh, when we hit that point, that's critical mass. That's where we have a, enough stations for everybody. But it's going to grow kind of homo homogeneously, if you will, or slowly, like cell phones did. It's going to be a few uh, cities that are going to have it, and then it's going to grow out from there with a high density of people who have the cars justify putting the stations in. Right. And then as more people get the cars, the there'll more. be more stations put in. One last question I'll let you go. What is going to be the life expectancy of a car like this? Today, We're looking typically for you're talking 175, 200,000 miles if you do proper maintenance on a, on a family automobile. What can we expect out of something like this? We're targeting when the vehicles are introduced 150,000 miles. And basically with no replacement of major systems and no major problems. You, this vehicle, these vehicles don't have any oil per se. And we don't have transfer cases in our car. We're direct drive electric motors. So there'll be lower maintenance costs associated with having the vehicle, but there will still be overall systems about 150,000 miles is what we're targeting. And by the time you get 150,000 150, on one of these, we'll have something else that's going to replace it. So uh, Probably a more advanced fuel cell system. I just wonder what the second-hand market is going to be. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know.